this guy is, this guy's phenomenal. So the shots that he makes is by far some of the toughest shots I've ever seen taken. Wow. Oh, to a point where you would look at, how can I do things different? Amazing to see a superstar who sacrifices. This calmness and poise. Curry gets the, the head because he's a champ, he's an MVP. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. But he's killing right now, he's just so dominant right now. I don't think there's ever been a guy in our league to be able to shoot the ball as well as he does. Steph Curry to me is, is a player I've never seen before. You said Steph Curry changed the face of basketball itself. That's what the game is, and that's kind of the Steph Curry effect. Talk to the... Steph Curry is messing the game up. <laughs> I'm on the internet now, I see a bunch of little kids dribbling, shooting 100 footers. To get warm, to, to start get, the game. Like but he's doing something for them, he's giving them a chance. I've played against the best, beat the best. I've only seen something like this one time. You know, growing up, you see big guards, Magic Johnson, Big O, guys like that. When I was playing, big guards, uh, Jordan, Penny Hardaway, LeBron. This guy reminds me of, where's my thing at? <laughs> this is what Steph Curry reminds me of when I see him. He reminds me of a cute little baby boy. <laughs> I'm glad he's playing in this era, because if he played in our era, D-Wade, I would have had to touch him up. Steph Curry over Shaq and made it anyway. Shaq came out. Surprisingly so. He's so little and so cute. <laughs> and he just want to kiss him every time I see him. And, but, but he's killing right now. He's just so dominant right now. You know, the, the things he's doing, he's bringing excitement to the game. You know, Steph, it probably is the most influential player when it comes to little people. Yes. Right. Nobody running the lane. Everybody stopping at the three-point line. Everybody well, crazy. I mean, I coach AAU. Like, I coach the Twins. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's from the time they warm up, they're shooting it from like the out of bounds line mm -hmm. instead of like hitting layups and everything. And that's literally the effect. And the whole team shoots threes now. You know what I mean? So that's kind of just the way the game has moved. So I understand, like you said, giving little people a chance is what Steph's doing and giving them hope. But at the same time, like you said, there's a reason why Steph is so great because he makes a lot of the motherfucking shots he, he takes. He makes a lot. You know what I mean? The other people don't make as many. And I used to hate on him early on in his career, but he ain't gonna make that. But he kept proving me wrong. That's why he's my best player. Mm. And Steph is my favorite player because, again, this is something I've never seen before. And when he first came in, I hated on him. Did you really? I'm, I'm the guy that's sitting on the couch, and when he goes to the corner and he throws it up, no way that goes in. And it goes in. And then, you know, I wait. He ain't going to make this one either. Guy. And then finally, he earned my respect, and he's my favorite player. I like being proved wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my yeah. message to these young cats when I say something, prove, prove me wrong. wrong. Yeah, take it as a challenge. Kobe, what do you think of when you watch Steph Curry? Um, I, I see a calmness about him. I see a calmness about him, and I, I think it's something that a lot of players don't understand. I think so. I think the fans, it's very hard for the fans to really understand what I'm saying. Because most players don't get it. But there's a real, there's a serious calmness about him, which is uh, which extremely deadly. What a move by Curry. But he plays with a real chip on his shoulder. Curry for three. Got it again. He's feeling it. And Steph Curry has a dozen. Ah, look at Steph Curry. He'll be guarded by uh, Golden State. Has more shots. In. Moving in. Mid range. Yeah. Catch and fire. Curry. Got it again. Right? Because he's not up. He's not down. He's not contemplating what just happened before or worrying about what's to come next. He's just there. And when a player has the skills and has trained himself to have the skills to be able to shoot, shoot dribble, left, right, etc. And then you mix that with this calmness and poise, and you have a serious, serious problem on your hands. And so when I watch him play, that's what I see. We've talked about this with a few guys. I think Drew most recently, right before the playoffs started, but with, with Steph in particular, Drew was just he was just going on about how hard it is to guard him. You know, so two guys specifically that have called you out as the best defensive player in the league, Steph. I think he did it recently, but I'm sure he said it before. We talked about the hot hand and what happens when he just starts going crazy and nothing and no one and Steph does it all. Steph did it last night. He does it all the time. Like as the best defensive player in the league, what do you do if anything to try to throw them off of that, or is there nothing you can do? Everything. I literally try to do everything. The things he even tries. 
the things he even Never tries. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, bro, w- wouldn't even thing too. consider it. Oh, no, but basketball wise, I'm like, he's putting this in the little kids' heads. Like, this is okay to try. No, it's not okay to try. Only he can do this. Only he does this. Nobody else. Step backs, hand in the face, getting fouled from 38 feet. Out of look, I don't know. You wouldn't. I feel like you would know better than I would. I don't have that when range. it comes to shooting and scoring. I don't have look, that range I, though. It's that it's is insane. Are there any moments that stand out to you in terms of just like shot making? Look, I mean, I know there's a ton, but like very, like specific moments of like what the fuck? I don't understand how this guy does what he does. So the first time we saw the peak of it, like when I was in Denver and we played him in a series. Can he do it in the playoffs at the Pepsi Center? And we're underway after that. Still looking, got it. Oh, they ran that elevator play. Left wide open. Sprint, sprints that we saw in practice the other day, wasn't it? It's Curry. Curry splits the double. And a soft touch for the bucket. Come on. Curry for three. Curry got the three off. Tie game! Steph Curry. And um, he shot a shot in front of the bench, and the team, the whole right in front, of, right in front of our bench, the whole team's going crazy, like close to him. And he lets the ball go and turns around and tells him to shut up. Ball's like midair; it's like not even close <laughs> to the rim. Twelve point lead for the Warriors at halftime. Jack gives it to Landry Curry. Up fake slides by bucket in front of the Denver bench. And the whole team went like. This is opposing team was like, yo, I've never seen that before during a game in a, in a, like a, that moment. But I'm such a competitor. I'm on the court. Like, I'm like, whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, that doesn't impress me. Like, that's just my competitive nature. But in practice one day, uh, you know, it's funny because in practice, the, 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 we got Carlos, the, the bums, the scrubs. So the, the second unit, we will always beat them. Right. So the majority of the time we got the best of them. You know, it was like whether, you know, Clay was just like, you know, he was in and out of his zone. He was like, all right, I'll, I'll score a bunch now or, you know, I'm chilling right now or Draymond. You know, them guys playing so many minutes, you know, you know, they were just trying to get a good two-minute runs, three-minute runs. But we meant, we went it most of the time. But this one day in practice, man, Steph went crazy. Like, he wasn't missing. And it was like, now we're blaming the the the, uh, the sub the sub refs or what we call them, the alternate refs that come in to help us out. Now we're cursing them out. Cause he can't miss. And then if he missed the call foul and I mean, one time I got mad and like, I forgot he was on my team and pushed him. He still made the shot. I mean, we played about seven minutes, man. He had to have like 25 points, man. It was crazy. And at one point, Sean Livingston just stopped. And it was like, yo, like, I don't know if I ever seen anything like this. And I had to stop and was like, yo, that was that's different because when you're in a game playing with somebody that good, like you're not really seeing how good they are because you locked in to do what yeah. you got to do. So you you missing out on like greatness by playing with greatness. That's a funny thing because when I watched Steph this past season, I caught myself being a fan a few times. Why do you think that your name is not brought up in conversations as like, you know, some of the top, you know, based on what you did in the league because you were dropping 50, 60 like Curry and them has been doing, but nobody really thinks about that. Do you think it's because they they didn't watch or you were in a market where people didn't see you or you feel like your career was cut short because of injury? The cut short part, but I think success winning comes with you know, so so you got you were putting up the numbers, but the t- yeah, you weren't winning. winning. I wasn't winning, so it was still this. He's yeah, okay, right. yeah. He's he has a lot of numbers, but there's no. So what ends up happening is, I said I opened the market for the Curries, the Dames, the Westbrook style of that point guard being a dominant scorer, but Curry established it because he won. He won being a scoring guard first. And the fact that he won, it became, all right, this this is not just a hybrid player. This is a point guard. And we're going to put this point guard numbers up against passing numbers. Right. So now, you know, now someone like Steph, his, his numbers trumps 
in the scoring categories and all these categories over all these point guards who wasn't scoring and they were just trying to get the team involved. So like, like I seen something today that said um, Curry is king of um, the turnaround. And I agree, even though I'm the guy who started it. The turnaround shot, walk away. The king oh, of the walk. Okay. Like, shoot yeah. and just walk away. Yeah. I mean, his, his was he shot, he turned around before yeah. he knew it and was I, going But in. I did it a couple of times. So like, yeah. yeah, I started it. He mastered it. So he is the king of it. He just takes like, off, runs down the floor. Yeah, he's the king of it. Like, yeah, I, I gave the idea, but he took it to a whole nother level. So I can't put claim to something. I can, you can, you did it first. I did it first, but he did it better. He did it a lot better. And at a different, and at a different time, too. Did, did, like, I did it on game winners. He, he hasn't done it on game winners. He did it, he's done it throughout the game. Okay, well, Curry, that's a challenge right there. It ain't even no yeah. challenge. Yeah, it is, because you got to do it on a game winner. <laughs> it's one thing to do it in the course of the game, and Florida game, but to do it on a game winner, that's, bro, that's on another level. But he's done it a hundred times. I get up. that, but on <laughs> a game winner, that's on another level. The fact what? that they were beating people, he was sitting down in third quarters, <laughs> Never really had chances to do it for the kick. True. true, true. <laughs> I'll argue okay. for him on that one. True, you know, true. he was beating everybody ass, so he you. really have to. Right. But right. I but I think that's the reason that I get lost in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. Is because when I was doing it, there was no there was no real reference. Curry gets the, the head because he's a champ, he's an MVP. So because of the status came with it, that's where but but he opens it up for the Trey Youngs and the everyone else right. too. I got a close friend, uh, you know, Evan Turner was like my man. And when we played them in the Western Conference Finals, finals, Evan was like, bro, I almost clapped when he made a shot. Like, I forgot <laughs> I was playing against him. He was like, man, I had never seen him like that. He was Because they were up 18, I think, either three or all four games. We slept them, but they were, up, they were up 18 every single game. Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to mention that. They were up 18 every game. And he was like, we knew it. Like, either Steph or Clay would make a shot. And they were like, oh, shit. Here it comes. <laughs> and they just kept looking at the scoreboard. Like, and he said, Steph made two threes one time. He was like, damn, he good. He was, <laughs> but he was like, man, I have to catch myself. Like, oh, shit, I'm on the, I'm on the other team. That sounds, like the, that sounds like the most Evan Turner thing ever, by the way. Exactly. Bron, because it's evident when you're out there playing, there is a rivalry. Well, he's in the way of me getting another trophy and I was in the way uh, the last three years and, and you battle it out so beyond that uh, we're two totally different people and mm-hmm. a lot of different things going on we're in different times in our careers and things like that so I don't take it any further than that besides the last three years I've tried to win a championship and he's been on the other side well I mean we don't talk nothing like that but we we're respectful of um, each other's game how each other approach the game how each other are off the floor um, you know, I think it's great. I've had an opportunity to speak to him a few times on the floor in the past. Are you going to give my point guard three hezzies? <laughs> you going to go here, here, and then here again? I'm like, damn. Three hezzies? Give my point guard three hezzies, though, for the L. Real like Bad boy. What? How under uh, recruited he was and. Uh, you know, to be able to lead a, a Davidson squad like that into the tournament. And I actually got an opportunity to watch him three or four times in college. I drove up to Detroit to watch him in the tournament. I happened to be in Charlotte playing the Hornets, uh, which was the Bob the Bobcats at the time, I believe, um, and got an opportunity to watch him there. And uh, I just thought he was special. Stephen Curry adjusts, puts 56 on the board and impresses everybody, but more so that man right there, LeBron James. I thought he was a special kid. I'm, I'm very good at noticing talent, and I thought he was special then, and you know, obviously he is now still. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand how how great his motor is. He never stops moving. Um, his ball handling, his ability to shoot the ball off the dribble and off the catch, um, you know, is uh, is uncanny. I don't think there's ever been a guy in our league to be able to shoot the ball as well as he does um, off the dribble or off the catch, off the ball, and. Um, you know, he just creates so many different matchup problems for your defense, and you always have to be aware of them. You know, it's always been a respect, a level of respect that's even beyond the game of basketball, um, but the way I feel for Steph. Um, everybody counting him out this year. Everybody saying that, uh, well, now that, you know, Clay is hurt, can Steph lead a team um, 
on his own. What is he going to be able to do? Can he carry a team on his own? Can he carry a team into the postseason? Can he keep a team afloat? Um, <clears throat> he's done that and more. We get all we, we get caught up in a record sometimes. We get caught up in oh, okay, who's the who has the best record? And you know, instead of just saying who had the best season that year, uh, and Steph has had, in my opinion, the the best season uh, all year. Where where do you feel Steph kind of ranks in in all of this? Where do you think his his because people were questioning his legacy at the top of the season? Maybe he had to reprove his legacy. So where where would you say you being someone who's with him close to him like that? where you could see him in the Pantheon? I don't know if there's ever been in the history of someone quieting doubters during All-Star Weekend. But, like, you, you just felt his presence there. Like, you knew Steph was there. And he was there in a major way. So, you know, I, I enjoyed that because, you know, he get quiet. And he's been, he been, he been saying his piece, and, and I, I love that. Right, with his game. I feel that, too. Um, he's been, he been and talking his game, too. Exactly. I, I, I saw some quote that said, uh, I, I don't have anything to prove. I, I got a lot left to accomplish, but nothing to prove. Like, come on, man, step me, the GOAT. Like, step yep. hey, That's what he's saying right now, and I love that. Like, embody that. Where I see him at right now is a completely different place than I've ever seen. You know, it's like... He know he know he's great, you know. Like, mm. and as, like the statement said, I don't have anything to prove. That's how he look every single day. Like, I don't have nothing to prove. I'm going to continue to show y'all that I am the goat. You know, that I am the best to ever do this. But I don't have anything to prove to y'all, and that and that's what that's what he's showing me mm. every single day. And you know, when you talk about the legacy, everybody questioned that in the beginning of this. People still question LeBron James' legacy. <laughs> like, I mean, if, if you're still questioning LeBron James' legacy, like, you're, you're looking for something to talk about. You're looking, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get the clickbait. And all. If you're still questioning LeBron, LeBron James' legacy, it's the same with Steph. If you still want to question Steph's legacy, the people who question Steph's legacy, they don't have a legacy of their own. I honestly believe, look, there's great shooters in NBA. Steph may be the greatest shooter we've ever seen. And, and all these, there's been great no, shooters. No, I know maybe. He's definitely. You, yeah? yeah? So, yeah, so yeah, talk about that. You think nice. Steph is the greatest shooter The greatest ever? shooter we've ever seen, hands down. Why do you feel that strongly about it? Be I agree with you. I just want your point. Because to, the shots that he makes is by far some of the toughest shots I've ever seen taken. Wow. Let alone crossing, made. Yeah, let yeah, alone yeah, made. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Crossing over behind the back, just... Yep. Letting it go, turning around, just running the other way, and this then ain't yeah. nothing else to be said. When I let this thing go, don't go for the rebound. <laughs> we need to get back. And right. that's for real. Right. and that's extreme. I mean, not only is it extreme confidence, but that's a talent, man. That's a mm -hmm. talent to have. His dad is obviously arguably one of the top mm -hmm. 15, 20, depending on what are you going by as shooters. But to, for him to make all of those shots off the dribble, pulling from half court. Mm -hmm. That the shot he made against Oklahoma City two years ago, yeah, like, across half, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous, crazy. There's always that debate on uh, whether you you hate losing more than you love winning, right? And I feel like for me, losing just is the worst feeling in in, in life at anything, whether it's cars, golf, basketball, whatever it is. I hate losing. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a question. But I, I mean, I have to respect losing because losing is a part of winning. Yeah. You, know, you never just you know win. You got to lose to win. Does it mean as much to us as it does to them? Absolutely. And if that's the case, then losing is going to hurt. Absolutely. You know, to a point where you would look at how can I do things different? How can I change? How can I make this team better? And that's that's the thing about a team, and you know this too, is that before you can look at someone else you got to look at yourself in the mirror because that's how things get started and you got to be willing to change and you got to have a sense of pride about yourself it's not about the money it's not about anything it's more about the pride and you know the best players whoever's playing the best is going to win before we go do you have a favorite player in today's nba who do you love to watch the most 
A player, uh, you know, I like to watch the most is LeBron James. There you go. Really. But also Curry from Golden State. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that guy, I mean, you've seen it. I mean, oh, man. It, it's impossible. I mean, somebody to shoot like that. I have never seen anything like that in my life. Well, see, now you know how I mean, people felt about you. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, but, I mean, but really, right I mean, there. that guy is, I, it, no, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. But I mean, you watch Curry. No, he's, he's yeah, special. Isn't something no doubt. special? I mean, I don't care where he is. He just come in and, gets it and just flicks it up there. I mean, like, and not but net. You know, he doesn't know lucky bounces or nothing like that. I mean, it's amazing. I enjoy, and the thing about it, he's a very unselfish player. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and he gets the ball to his teammates, too. He gets a lot of assists and everything else. I mean, he's just, you know, I'd say freak of nature. I mean, I've never seen that. I'll never think you'll ever see anybody shoot like that again. In all my travels, people come up to me and was like, man, what did it feel like in 94 for me at 25 point? fourth quarter versus, you know, being in the zone. What's it like to be in your zone? I'm sure my pupils are all huge, like looking around, <laughs> like feeling a certain type of way, but it's one of the best feelings because you don't think about much. You're just looking for any bit of daylight. If the shot is not getting blocked, it's going in. And it's such a seamless flow to it uh, from the time I plant to the time I release, and there's zero thought in, in that motion. Um, and that's such a freeing feeling. Being in that zone is, it could be the Moralizing to the opponent, to whoever's guarding you. What are some of the things that your opponents have said when you're in that Stephen Curry zone? In the moment, there's not much because either I'm doing some stupid dance on the way back and uh, I'm out of earshot so they can't say that to me. A lot of it is you'll get the ones in the layup lines, you're like, hey, don't be trying nothing crazy tonight. And, like, little stuff like that. I just like the dumb founded, like, stairs. They have nothing to say. Those are the moments you live for. Curry three. Well, I think the beautiful thing about Steph Curry right now is he is the ultimate perspective when it comes to shooting. Right. I I think maybe for a second, or I think anybody would maybe think for a second that they're, you know, maybe I'm having a pretty good shooting season. I'm doing this or that. And then you just see the statistics that this guy is putting up on a consistent basis. And it's just, it's otherworldly. It, it is... I, I think the last five games, he's averaging over nine threes made per game. Yeah. I had a stretch last year where I think in three games, I made 24 or 25 threes. And I legitimately felt like everything <laughs> I threw up was going in. I felt like I was throwing the ball into the Atlantic Ocean. Like, I, I, would, I would never miss. And this guy's done it 10x. I mean, he, he's done nine a game for five games straight. It's just one time in my career, I've hit 10 threes. I think fought for the last five games he's done it. It's just like it's it's sickening. It's an absolute joke. I, I I think it's you look at his numbers and he's I believe at this point surpassed his unanimous MVP season. I I don't care. It's incredible what he's done. He needs to be in this MVP conversation um, because when you watch him play basketball, he is one of the few players in the NBA when you watch him play where it's very clear nobody else in the NBA can do what he's doing. Steph is the, I've never seen nobody like him. I told him last night, I said, when you play with force, like you, I've never seen a player like you before. And he played with force tonight. And the stuff you hear about Steph, as far as sacrificing and being selfless and caring about his teammates, caring about other people is real. It's not a fake, it's not a facade. He doesn't put on his mask or his suit every single day to come in here and fake in front of you guys. He really is like that. And it's amazing to see a superstar who sacrifices, who doesn't care about nothing but the group. And he obviously wants to play well. He obviously wants to show who he is because he's competitive, but it's all about the group. So when I ask him, like, yo, you want to work out? Some guys want to, you know, keep it to themselves. But he's like, no, let's get some work in. This entire segment is just to marvel about Steph Curry. You tried to guard this man. I cannot imagine. Why are you coming to me like that, Adam? Because Shaq wasn't going out there and Not hedging on Steph. Not so I just want to know, it couldn't have been fun. It had to be awful. No, no. Um, fear. You have a little fear. And not from, like, you're scared of a guy, but just not knowing what he's, what he's going to do. When a guy is coming up, and obviously he has an amazing handle, but when a guy can shoot from anywhere on the floor, when he shoots from going left and he shoots going right, and then when he gets the ball up, he's even more deadly with his cuts, with his screening, 
with his ability to come off screens. Mm. I, I mean, he's just impossible to guard. So I, when I watch this guy, I watch him shoot shots, Candace, that I'm like, no, no, that's not, that's not a good shot. And it's like, but for Steph, that is a perfect shot. And so what I love about Steph is obviously all the highlights we see from him coming down shooting, you know, shooting these 50 footers. But what I love about him is his ability to give the ball up the ability to play off the ball, his ability to pass the ball with both hands, and also his ability to go in there and, like we talked about, he's a great finisher. People don't give him credit because we see the half-court shots that he make, but he's a great finisher with both hands. He take contact well, so, I mean, this guy is, this guy's phenomenal. Great player in the organization. G another great player come down that kind of overshadows your greatness. And Steph took a back seat, similar to what I did, and we kind of forgot about Steph Curry when, when Kevin Durant was there. And he goes through the injury last year. And now he's like, hello, yeah. two-time MVP is back. And he's back with you know, a level that we have never seen out of a two-time MVP. This is, he may not get MVP this year, but this is definitely, for him, it's probably gonna be one of, the, one of his favorite seasons of his entire career when it's all said and done. In the days that I played this game, I've never seen a guy other than maybe a Reggie Miller where you just didn't want him to touch the ball. But Steph has got the defense so extended, 35 feet away from the basket. The threat and the pressure that he puts on your defense night in and night out. At no time in history have we seen a player be able to extend a team defense like this guy. I mean, a guy that's 6'4". The pressure that he put on a team defense night in and night out, and it's unbelievable that they're going back to the finals again. That's unheard of. <laughs> and how do you defend that? Right. And that's that really what impressed me more is that how he was able to come to the forefront in this series and Kevin Durant not be there and all the attention went to Steph. It reminds me of where the Warriors were four years ago. What Steph can do that I can't like that for he he can shoot it from way, way, way out there and shoot the good. But at the same time, what Steph and I have in common is we weren't the we were beating the freak athletes. Okay, we were beating the Giants. And I got big respect for him for that. Now, my the, the only thing that I was saying to you that I, I I'll say here. The game today, it favors the point guards and the small players. No no the question. era that I won in, the rules were geared toward the bigger players. They changed the rules so the small man can dominate. Okay? The rules were not set up for me as a small person to dominate. And that's the difference. But do you see Steph Curry, can you say after four or five years that he's the best shooter that we've ever seen? No, I don't know about that. Chris Mullen was pretty good. And how about Mark Price? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's, I mean, I always thought he was deep, one... deep shooter. Curry's about one of the best. It's, it's no different than any gym you walk into. When you walk in there, all the kids are shooting three pointers. If there's a three point line, the kids are going to be out there. But I know the respect that Mark has for, for Steph, and he has as much as I do. And he had the honor of coaching him. Steph Curry is a great basketball player. Can you imagine the, the, the Larry, amount of time he's uh, put, put in on, on a gym floor to perfect him skills and play the way he plays? Steph Curry is, is probably right now our best player. And what, what a champion. Uh, right now, from what I've seen, um, it's easy for me to say that he's the best that I've ever seen shoot. Um, I've seen some great shooters. Um, uh, but, you know, we have this conversation all the time about uh, the generations, uh, what we've seen, you know, who's the best at their particular position or, or their skill. You know, you guys know as well as I do, each year, the generation, when they change, the game changes. And um, so I, I really put him in a category all of, uh, of his own because the way he plays the game, you know, being a point guard that, that can handle the way he handles the ball and the way he can shoot the ball and the way he shoots it. And I think right now people are watching Steph play, and so these young kids are now growing up, and he's setting the bar for those young kids at the point guard position. How much fun is it now that the game is over to think about the matchup you have with Steph Curry? Man, he can shoot that ball, can't he? Man, I felt like I was as close as you could get to him, but uh, 
lot of credit to Steph, man. He, he, he plays hard, plays the right way, but that's a good team win for us. All that stuff he learned going to your camps as a kid. Whatever. He learned that from uh, uh, Dale, from his dad, you know what I mean? But it's a really good team over there. I'm just happy we got up for this game. We even look at, like, Steph's three-point contest. I mean, he missed, like, the four, first four or five shots, and it was like nothing. And, you know, Conley had, like, 28 or seven. He just went on and made his two, two uh, three-point, like, the green balls I had this year and then made all of his uh, two-point balls. And then, like, he just – and then he made the last shot to win it. It was just, like – I don't know, he just makes it easy. It makes it look so easy. I mean, honestly, as a fan of the game, it's like beautiful to watch. You enjoy watching them shoot the ball that way, and it's just, I mean, it's just very special. I mean, that's why those guys are so great. How do you do that? Like, is that a thing you practice? Is that your hips? Is your core? Whatever. And he just he broke it down for me. He went through his like his exercises he does. He does. But the big thing was he says at the end of every workout, he actually practices those shots when he's the most tired. So he feels like when he's in a game and he's fresh, you know, he can make those shots. But to do what he does, both those guys is just – it's ridiculous. And even the, the, the shot he made against OKC, I mean, who takes that? In a playoff series, like to win the series and you just – like so confidently take it to me. I mean, confidence, I think, has to have a huge part in it as well. But, I mean, to me, that was, that was one of the most amazing shots I've seen in my life when I saw it. I just, like, stood there and, like, staring at the TV and I was like, wait, what, what just happened? Like – this is like, this isn't like normal. This doesn't just happen like that. In many ways, Steph is our franchise. You know, um, I think when people think of the Warriors, they think of Steph. Uh, we've got four All Stars, and we've got tremendous talent and great players. Um, an amazing PR guy and Raymond Ritter. But what people really think about is Steph Curry. You know, that's that's the first thought. And I think he also embodies what we are about in terms of the style of play and the joy with which our players uh, play the game. And, um, and everybody connects to Steph, fans out there, kids. Um, when I was in Phoenix uh, as a general manager, we were desperate to get Steph in the draft. And uh, one of our thoughts in the front office was you know all the little kids in the valley in phoenix are wearing steve nash jerseys but we need we need the the next player who the you know who can uh, be that that player who the, the kids are going to buy the jerseys of and uh, i kept envisioning these you know steph curry sons jerseys and all over uh, scottsdale and phoenix and uh you just he had something about him coming out of college that you knew like you know I, nobody knew he was going to be an mvp but you could tell people would connect with him because he looks you know like like you or me or you know it's, he's just a normal looking guy and um and yet he's got this electric uh, skill and an amazing personality and so throw all that stuff together and he's the face of the franchise